I just perform better with coffee. <laughs> wakey, wakey. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, so yeah, you're just talking to me. So. Talking to you, not, not to the camera. the camera. Sweet. Being creative means there's two components. There's one where you're tapping into like what is like a original idea coming from your soul and your true identity. And then there's like the second kind of part where you're like listening. It's about being receptive. There's a creativity in that as well. My work is very optical. There's like a chaotic element to the work where, where the colors are swirling all around, but there's also like the, the controlled element to it. I'm pursuing beauty. I'm pursuing beautiful images but also like a beautiful experience. As a kid, I just had a very supportive, just a creative family, like always encouraged me to be creative myself. I've always had like art in my in my life in one way or another. Uh, it, was, it was not always painting, like I, I was big uh, like into sketching and you know played around with like animation and all kinds of stuff like as I was like growing up. I ran a gallery for five years where I showed other people's art and then I was like if I don't pursue my dream of being a you know artist uh, full time then I'll forever hate myself. <laughs> so I quit all my jobs, quit the gallery and I was just like I'm, I'm, I'm taking a leap of faith here. I went like deeply into debt and I like pulled out of it and and uh, it was just kind of like a, a leap of faith. Yeah, it was it was scary to take that leap of faith, but I think it's a responsibility uh, you know for artists to to be outside of their comfort zone to show other people that that's possible and like you know and, and that's what being creative is all about it's like about doing it differently and like that's a reason to to hustle and you have to stay stay fluid to like mold with the ever-changing like market the only thing that's consistent is like my persistence Physical motion is totally crucial to, to my process. It's, it's all about motion. I, it's all about the physical movement of paint and the natural motion. I'm just fascinated with like what nature is doing on its own. There's the artist hand component in that where I'm like setting these things into motion. But at the end of the day, I don't own like that parabola or like sine wave or anything that's just in like the fabric of like the universe and like and I'm just kind of looking at it through like an artistic lens with like a rainbow of colors and presenting it. I usually spend the entire day or days in advance like prepping like assembling my arsenal of, of paint, tuning all my like machines and uh, assembling all my canvases and then it's like a creative like surge, like, a, like almost like a trance where I'll do like 10, like sometimes even like 20 paintings and just like let it, let it all happen, let it all kind of flow and then kind of quiet my mind because I'll be super critical on myself. So I have to like create a lot and then like let it all dry, come back another day and look at it all and then like kind of edit and select from there because I have like a criteria that's like ever changing of like what is good, what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. So the main one is the bicycle spin machine, uh, which is basically like a cannibalized uh, bicycle, which I've reoriented from being like vertical to being like horizontal. And I pan pedal the, the crank and it rotates uh, the canvas as opposed to like a wheel of a bike. That's like the, the crux of all of my paintings pretty much. One key part about my process is that I have the canvas stationary when I load it with the paint and then I spin it. That gives me a lot of control actually because it's like I'm kind of loading it up. I'm doing manipulating the paint with, with whatever trowels or um, palette knives or tools, even just my hands, you know, into the paint and it's totally stationary. And then I'm essentially expanding that image. And then I've developed on that the other interacting component, which is the swinging like trapeze or swinging trough. It's basically like a, a trough of paint, which, which has three walls, a, a platform on the bottom and, and one side is open and it sort of dispenses 
uh, paint out, out of one side of it and that swings over top of like a horizontal spinning canvas and so the results is the relationship between these two uh, machines like the, the centrifugal motion and the essentially like the pendulum of the trapeze. There's also a uh, different uh, pendulum that I use where instead of a trough it's just like a paint can with a hole in it and that is more for like elliptical pendulums so there's there's that as well. I use a lot of paint. Part of the thing that's like unique about my process is that there's just so much it's, it's, it's like excessive use of paint. I put more paint probably on the floor and my pants and the walls than is actually on the canvas. It's definitely impactful. It makes people think. It affects people. How do I choose colors? I do tend to lean towards like bright, energetic colors because I believe in like positive energy and, and, and you know positive vibes. That's really important. And I think like bright colors and movement help to kind of go in that direction. But there's also the emotional side. So there's a fullness to the color where it like ranging from, from your darker, deeper, moodier, more tertiary tones all the way to your like bubblegum pink, blow your brains out, like, you know, <laughs> all of that. <laughs>It's really an exercise of letting go, letting go of my own expectations, letting go of myself and like what I think is, is good or bad, like letting go of that, letting what happened happen and, and being still in my mind enough that I, I don't have that reflexive no. Before you do anything, the, the first like thing is like no, like you know, like, <laughs> and then you can say yes, but you're gonna say no first. Like it's hard to say yes immediately, and I, so I'm trying to not do either, like not say yes, not say no, but just like be aware and almost like watch myself from a third person like perspective. I'm like up in the corner of the room watching Cal and the painting happen, and when I do that, it's more of like tapping into like like the nature of it. And then, and then it's really interesting because when I do do that and I come back, then it's like, it's stronger. Like when I do assert a little bit more of my choices, they're very kind of precise. Like either I stop or I start or I destroy or I create. They're like these like kind of nodes in this like otherwise like totally transient, like loose kind of like third person space. How do I know like when, it, when it's done? It's, it's a conversation, so I'm, I'm, I'm like having a conversation with the painting. It sounds kind of weird, but yeah. I'm not talking to the painting, I'm listening. And I'm not listening with my ears, but I'm kind of like listening with my eyes. I'm listening to like what it's telling me. And if it tells me something interesting, then then I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a pass. But if it's like, if it's telling me some old dusty thought, <laughs> then it's like, can you build on that idea? You know, and, I, and then and that's where I have to go back in and I continue to, to, to paint. So I'm just trying to like be, be quiet and not assert what I think is good and just like let it organically present itself. And, it, and if it does, then, then awesome. And, but if it doesn't, then awesome. I want to be a successful artist. And so what is a successful artist? To me, that's where I can support like myself one day, like a family and like live like a decent life solely through, through my art. But on the more interpersonal side, like, like interacting with like the, the public, I want to be successful in the, in the way that I inspired the world. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of huge, but um, I think that's a pretty good goal. <laughs>